Hello everyone. Um, if you are using blockchain or if you are, you know, uh, investing in crypto, then unless you have been living under a rock for the past few days, you would have heard about the Ethereum merge. And so in this video, we will talk about everything that you should know uh, about the Ethereum merge, especially if you are invested in Ethereum or any of the Ethereum assets for that matter. And the uh, usual disclaimer and warning, I'm not a financial advisor or investment expert. All the videos that I make are for sharing my learning and uh, the process. Uh, you make your own decisions based on your own research and do not trust people who call themselves as professional brokers or investment advisors. Most of these people are scammers and you need to be very careful with your investments, especially when dealing with these kind of scammers who call themselves as online brokers or investment advisors. Um, I'm actively uh, tweeting on my Twitter account at the rate channel to London and you can follow um, active handles that I'm following on Twitter to get up-to-date information on many of these topics. So what is the Ethereum merge first of all? Ethereum is currently one of the largest blockchain networks in the world and it's running um, using the, the gas fees as the Ethereum token ETH and currently it's operating on proof of work. Um, protocol and it is moving to proof of stake consensus algorithm and in episode 43 I had explained the difference between what is proof of work and what is proof of stake in detail and why ethereum blockchain is moving to proof of stake in the first place this proof of stake the move to the proof of stake is called as the merge process and ethereum merge is probably the biggest blockchain event of this decade it is a very important event that is happening uh, in, the, in the entire blockchain world and all eyes are pretty much focused on uh, the next few days when the Ethereum merge is going to happen. So why is it called the merge in the first place? Again, as I had explained in episode 43, uh, the Ethereum proof of stake is already running parallel on a chain called as the beacon chain. Even though it is not actively validating transactions, there is a parallel chain called as the beacon chain, which has been running for more than a year which is working on the proof of stake uh, concept or proof of stake consensus algorithm. Now the merge is the event where the current active proof of work chain merges with this beacon chain and it becomes a single chain, which is the energy efficient proof of stake chain. So after the merge event, these two chains will merge into one single blockchain, which is now going to be the future Ethereum blockchain. And this, uh, merging process and this proof of stake um, new chain will also pave the way for uh, future enhancements like the sharding for example and much more and sharding for example is a, is a concept that enhances the capability of the blockchain after the merge has been successful it has been planned for somewhere in the future near 2023 and you can know more details about it technically sharding and all the other future events um, warrant a complete separate video so I'm not going to explain that in this video when is the merge going to happen so the merge is expected to happen on the 15th September somewhere around 7 a.m. Uh, India time it's expected to start at that point in fact if you google for ethereum merge right now google actually has started a countdown clock and it shows you how important this event is from the blockchain perspective not just blockchain but in general it has got huge implications First of all, you know, how difficult is this merge? You know, why are we talking about it? Why is it so difficult? Because the merge is probably the most incredibly uh, complex attempts ever made in blockchain so far. And the analogy that the Ethereum developers have given and I've just borrowed it is that the beacon chain, think of it like a new engine of a spaceship which is already in space and running and the spaceship being Ethereum. So we are replacing the old engine, which is the proof of work uh, algorithm, proof of work uh, protocol with this new engine which is the uh, POS beacon chain um, concept the proof of stake right so what is complex in this whole process is that it's going to be a hot swap meaning the spaceship is going full velocity and we are changing the engine uh, without stopping the spaceship when it's actually going ahead full steam and you know think about it when a car is going in full speed or a bus is going in full speed and you try to change a, a tire when the car is still moving um, let alone a tire and then think about changing an engine and then think about changing a spaceship for example it's that complex so what should you do I mean, primarily the question that everybody will ask before we jump into more details is as a holder of ethereum you know i have ethereum in a centralized exchange like wazirx i have uh, ethereum in a, in a DeFi wallet like metamask what should i do 
um, the answer is simple. It's actually nothing. You know, Ethereum or and all the developers have stated multiple times that if you are a holder of Ethereum or any other digital wallet, any um, uh, Ethereum uh, based token like ERC20 based token, as a non node staking operator, like a normal person who's just holding the funds in the wallet, you do not need to do anything. In fact, don't do anything is, is the best advice that they're giving. Uh, and even after the merge, you don't need to do anything. You will not notice it. In fact, it'll be, it should be transparent to you if everything goes smooth. So be on high alert for people who are trying to scam saying that, you know, click here to get the upgrade to Ethereum 2. Click here to get your Ethereum upgraded to the ETH2 token, for example. None of this is, is true. You do not need to do anything. You don't need to send your funds anywhere. People are going to be trying to scam others um, by, by, you know, going for... Uh, their ignorance and, and trying to take their funds during this process. That's the best thing. That's, that's the worst thing that's going to happen. So there are some essential misconceptions on the merge. A lot of talk, a lot of rumors have gone ahead. In fact, a lot of mainstream media has even published some of these rumors and misconceptions. You know, uh, common misconceptions being reduced gas fees, you know, transactions will be much faster. And as a consequence, we don't need L2 chains. For example, if you've invested in tokens like Polygon, Matic, you know, you would not need L2 chains after the Ethereum merge. So what is the reality? The reality is that especially on the reduced gas fees and transactions will be faster. It's completely false. The merge is basically a change of the consensus mechanism. We're just going, moving from proof of work to proof of stake. There is no expansion of network capacity or upgrade in, in any other way. And this will also mean that there is no going to be any um, resultant lower gas fees or faster um, uh, transactions or improvement in uh, the speed. I mean, there will be a 10% expected overall efficiency improvement. But as an end user, you will hardly see any uh, improvement in speed. That is again going to be dependent on the network congestion and the network usage that we have always seen. So if anything, the L2 chains are going to benefit much more uh, from this merge process because technically it's going to be much more easier for them going forward because there will be a single chain uh, operating. So, so this is one of the commonly asked questions or these three, uh, four points are the common misconceptions because they have been quoted in news media as well several times incorrectly. But if you actually go to ethereum.org and read their own um, updates, you will see that this is what they have stated exactly. So there is also a, a concept called Shanghai Upgrade, which you might have heard if you are uh, watching the news or if you have read the news. Shanghai Upgrade is the ability to withdraw from the Ethereum staking. So if you watched my episode 43, we talked about the fact that after the beacon chain merges with the main chain, uh, there is going to be a, an unstaking ability for people who have already staked into the beacon chain, Lido staking, for example, and validator nodes. But that unstaking is not immediately coming with the merge. That's going to happen at a future point somewhere in 2023, where the Shanghai or probably earlier after the uh, merge happens through another upgrade called as the Shanghai upgrade. So there are subsequent uh, blockchain events that are going to happen, which are less significant from a technology standpoint, but probably more significant from a, an individual or an investor standpoint, because like, you know, if you have staked into Ethereum, you will not still not be able to unstake it with just this merge alone. There are future events that are coming into perspective. Now, what is the biggest benefit? Why do all of this um, if it's going to be this incredibly complex, right? So the biggest benefit, um, obviously, other than the enhancements of sharding and monetary benefits is that energy consumption. The proof of stake, the merge into proof of stake is expected to reduce the energy consumption by 99.95%. The proof of stake is expected to be uh, 2000 times more energy efficient than proof of work. So to put it into perspective, the total energy consumption of Ethereum network is about 112 terawatt hour, which is comparable to the total energy consumption of Netherlands as a country for the year. And the carbon emission is equivalent to about 53 metric tons, which is equivalent to the carbon emission of a country like Singapore, for example. So after the energy consumption, I mean, after the merge, the energy consumption is expected to reduce to about 0 0.01 terawatt per hour. That is an enormous reduction in energy consumption with regards to how the Ethereum uh, network is going to operate in the future and which makes it, which is going to make it one of the greenest uh, blockchains comparable to almost 
all the new uh, L1 blockchains which have started up with uh, proof of stake, for example. So Ethereum is leading the way in terms of you know, showing how blockchain can operate in a much more energy efficient um, way. So what is the, uh, the risk of failure, right? So uh, this is an unknown territory at this point because despite all the complexity and despite all the uh, testnet uh, merge runs that have happened, have shown that uh, you know everything uh, when when it is fully planned can be fully successful and also the brightest minds are working on it and and so the the expectation is that the merge will succeed however there are two scenarios possible one is the scenario a where everything goes well you will hardly even notice that there has been a, a, a merge that has happened or a move to the proof of stake because like i said if you're holding your tokens on centralized exchanges or DeFi wallet you wake up in the morning, everything will look exactly the same. You will notice nothing new about the blockchain. It will still be performing the same levels as before, right? So that is scenario A. And scenario B is, uh, you know, in case the uh, the merge hasn't been successful, the chain could split into two chains and you will have two competing Ethereum blockchains being created. So one is the um, the the merged chain, uh, and one is the another is the new proof of work chain, which could have a token called ETHW, for example, which is going to continue operating as a new proof of work blockchain, Ethereum blockchain, and the existing Ethereum chain will then become a merged proof of stake network. One way or the other, we are going to get an Ethereum proof of stake blockchain. But the question is in the scenario B, whether or not there is a split that is going to create a, a new uh, proof of work blockchain called as Ethereum with the token called as Ethereum W. Now the scenario B is a complete unknown and uh, you cannot prepare for that. Uh, you have to uh, basically phase it like an emergency strategy. It's like a fire, you know, how much ever you prepare for a fire drill, when an actual fire happens, you know, the, the firefight is real. And uh, the scenario B is pretty much going to be a firefight if it happens. It's going to be like a real fire where um, you know, emergency strategies are going to be thrown in depending upon how much the fire is raging. And there is a possibility that if that scenario B can be controlled within a few hours, then that, that new chain will not be permanent and you will still not notice and can still go back and become a scenario A. So it's how quickly the fire can be put out in case of a scenario B. But... Um, you will know if the scenario B has happened, practically everybody will be shouting about it and you will know. If scenario A has happened, nobody will talk about it, nothing would have happened and, and things would have been normal. So that's how you will know what has happened at the end of the merge. I will also be tweeting about it. So what can you do in the, in the end? What can you do as an end user, right? So avoid using Ethereum on-chain transactions. So do not send Ethereum from one wallet to another. Do not try to withdraw from centralized exchange to decentralized exchange. Do not try to move funds from one wallet to another. Do not try and, and do DeFi transactions on the Ethereum network or even the Polygon network for that matter. Because we know that sometimes these Ethereum transactions can take hours depending upon the congestion. And you do not want an active transaction on the blockchain when the merge is happening. So pretty much avoid, even though there is going to be zero downtime, pretty much avoid doing on-chain transactions. And also I would always discourage leverage trading. I've always discouraged it in my uh, in my channel all the time, but especially this time, do not try and, and not do leverage trading on Ethereum or any volatile Ethereum assets at this point, because there could be a massive swing and liquidation possibility. And do not fall victim to scams promising like Ethereum two tokens or you know, uh, promising to give you, uh, pr promising to, you know, help you with the merge process and tricking you into giving your private keys or control of your account or account details for that matter. So, and finally, last but not the least, you know, share this information with people that you know who are in the blockchain and in the crypto space and who may not be following um, these kind of information blogs on these kind of information channels, but um, so that they do not get tricked into into any of these scams for that uh, matter, right? So uh, that's probably the best that you can do at this point. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Thank you.